What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management Channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm going to be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA Saga. And in today's uh, video guys, uh, I will show you two main paths uh, of uh, the potential resolution. For now, I have to say that uh, we are focusing on one path uh, and it is a path through litigations. Then I will continue with the most recent update in regards uh, to the lawsuit that was filed uh, just a couple of days ago by SEC against Naked Shorter. On top of that, uh, I will show you uh, the comments of our headliners, uh, major headliners who have an experience uh, in this type of uh, litigations. Then I will show you how powerful and important uh, might be the actions uh, that are trying to prevent uh, the Naked Shorting activity in our the countries and I will show you very positive experience uh, from South Korea. And at the end of this video I will share my personal story. That is why guys watch this video till the very end because it is very important for me personally. So and before we dive deep into all of this please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm and drop me a line in the comment section for whatever reason you want. It is the easiest way how we can push uh, the video forward to the broader audience and eventually it will help us uh, to win this battle. So just do it and let's move forward. I have to say that uh, for now we don't have a lot of updates in regards to the uh, Don Fees trip to District Columbia. We don't have any updates uh, from uh, Jen Capella Twitter account. Uh, we know that on May the 3rd uh, he had a uh, very intensive meeting schedule. And I have to say that uh, we don't know the results uh, of uh, these meetings yet. But definitely we will find it out uh, within the next couple of days. Unfortunately Don Fis uh, also doesn't post any updates uh, in regards to his trip. But uh, guys, be patient and uh, the information will come. So, let me remind you that just a couple of days ago, Securities and Exchange Commission filed a lawsuit against uh, several companies uh, of Kurt Kramer, and uh, it was a lawsuit that is pointing to the quite harmful actions uh, of uh, dilutive funding of uh, microcap companies. And uh, this uh, lawsuit is definitely the first lawsuit uh, that uh, was uh, filed against this activity from the Securities and Exchange Commission. And let me show you that uh, uh, Richard Hoffman, one of our headliners, uh, published a video in regards uh, to this uh, lawsuit and uh, it is uh, about 16 uh, minutes long video where he explains uh, what is this case about and how it might affect uh, other companies and how it might affect uh, MMAT, MMTLP, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons and uh, TRCH ticker symbols. And as you can see, guys, uh, I mentioned all of the ticker symbols that is related to our case. And this is uh, because of uh, the timeline uh, when uh, this uh, illegal activity happened. From January 2018 uh, till uh, March uh, 2023. At least till March uh, of 2023. And about uh, 325 uh, microcap stock issuers were affected because of uh, this activity. And guys, the main concern uh, that uh, Richard Hoffman uh, explained in his video is that uh, SEC itself didn't pay enough attention to this activity because they noticed uh, for the first time uh, this illegal activity in 2018. And since then, they let uh, these uh, several companies uh, to perform their activity and to push down uh, the value of uh, US listed stocks. On top of that, guys, in this uh, lawsuit, it was mentioned only four companies that are related to Kurt Kramer. And Richard thinks that uh, uh, it might be much more than four companies uh, from Kurt Kramer himself. And uh, the timeline of uh, their activity might be much wider than from January 2018 through March 2023. And uh, guys, we know that uh, other companies uh, were targeted uh, by this type of uh, toxic lenders. And because of uh, this activity, the damages might be extremely, extremely high. Let me show you this uh, tweet that uh, was published by Junk Savvy nine hours ago. And she refers to the tweet that was published by Adiseos. First of all, let me quote you this. Clear stream where innovation meets FTDs. And uh, you can see uh, the link uh, to the article where innovation meet trust. And according to this uh, data, there is uh, 5,254,700 nice securities 
uh, with a value of uh, more than 616 trillion dollars. And Junk Savvy wrote, I am overwhelmed uh, with trust, wondering how many brokers with long positions in MMTLP settle or don't settle trades uh, through Clearstream. And it is only one company, one clearing firm who has this number of securities with this uh, value. But let me show you this tweet that was published by Adiseos. He wrote this, FBI and DOJ criminal division. Not first time I have posted this image. Do you grasp uh, the magnitude? Read the bottom right corner. 1.142 quadrillion euros in the settlement files in just one clearing house. 36 times uh, the US national debt. SEC enforcement is a joke. And guys, so let me show you this uh, uh, document in details. Here you can see the total value of settlement uh, instructions in euros. And here is the number 1 quadrillion, 142 trillion, 348 billion, 252 million, 947,780 dollars. Guys, this number is a mind boggling number. I didn't even think that I would ever meet these type of numbers in any type of official documents. But it happened. And guys, it is a fail to deliver security. As you can see, the first string is failed to deliver securities, $576 trillion. How authorities might even say that they are working hard to prevent this illegal activity? It doesn't make sense. Uh, and I think we have uh, to solve this problem and we have to fix the system. The system is broken. And that is why, guys, we have two main paths uh, to solve this problem. First of all, it is a litigation path, and the second one is the path through Congress. And for now, let's focus on the litigation path. Mark Basile uh, wrote uh, this tweet uh, just uh, several hours ago, and he says, Kramer's attorney's response to SEC enforcement compliant, alleging dealer registration violations. And for the record, the Kramers are very smart businessmen, and uh, their attorneys are great attorneys. Interesting to see where this goes. And he added the, uh, the link to the official uh, document. Let me quote you just, just these two paragraphs. The SEC, including some of the same SEC attorneys involved in this in investigation, has known for more than a decade of Mr. Kramer's funding of small public companies and never once suggested that uh, this uh, required registering as a dealer. And uh, that's because Mr. Kramer was not uh, required to do so. Instead, the SEC, in violation of Mr. Kramer's due process rights, has attempted to rewrite a 90-year-old statute to try to destroy firms that lend to small public companies and thereby uh, deprive small public companies of the critical financing they need to grow their business. Guys, how ridiculous this statement is. Uh, they are uh, like a Robin Hoods. Uh, they are trying to uh, say that uh, they give money to small companies, but uh, they have a completely opposite intention. So, we agree with the SEC commissioners Hester Pierce and Mark Yeda uh, that uh, the SEC attempt to redefine dealer registration requirements uh, obliterates uh, decades of law and is arbitrary and even tyrannical. We are surprised and disappointed that the SEC would bring this action based on loans uh, that the SEC itself reviewed and approved, said Kurt Kramer, the owner of uh, PowerUp Lending and other related lenders. Guys, let me show you the comment uh, from Mark Basile. And uh, first of all, he responded to the Jeff Davis, uh, the Energy OG comment. Uh, Jeff Davis wrote, We surprised uh, and disappointed that uh, the SEC would bring this action based on the laws uh, that the SEC itself reviewed and approved. He basically mentioned the same statement. He asks, SEC approves laws or converts? News to me. And Mark Basile said, They don't approve laws. You are correct. This means, guys, uh, this statement is a false statement that was said by uh, Kurt Kramer himself. And uh, he is uh, definitely trying to trick the court when he mentioned these uh, actions that didn't happen and SEC didn't perform this action. That is why, guys, uh, I think uh, it is a quite interesting uh, lawsuit and we have to keep an eye on this lawsuit, especially with this information. So, Mark Basile wrote this. In some of these cases uh, brought in federal courts in other areas of the country, 
the appeals uh, courts uh, have agreed with the SEC 100% of the time. However, this case is brought in the Eastern District of New York, our backyard, where the Second Circuit uh, has yet to opine on this. It had its uh, chance twice already in some of uh, our civil cases, but they punted on other issues uh, and uh, have not yet decided the uh, dealer issue. Doesn't matter, some of our clients are prepared for amicus appearances to support the SEC, just like the Kramers did in one of our cases. They were basically ignored by the court in that case. And guys, what does it mean, amicus appearance? If you will try to Google it, you will find the first link, amicus curiae. And let me quote you what does it mean. An amicus curiae is an individual or organization that is not a party or to a legal case but that is permitted to assist a court uh, by offering information, expertise or insight that has a bearing on the issues in the case. And this is the most important part. Guys, you know that uh, Mark Basile and his company has several clients uh, from the MMTLP community. And uh, because of uh, this number, let me show you this uh, uh, filing, this lawsuit again. Uh, because of uh, this number of 325 micro cap stock issues that were targeted by this uh, toxic lender, definitely some of these stocks, uh, some of uh, these companies uh, might be the clients of Mark Basile. That is why these clients uh, will appear as amicus curiae and they will support this uh, lawsuit. And definitely this might bring even more interesting uh, uh, information uh, on the table and this uh, might lead to very important results for the community. That is why guys uh, keep an eye on this uh, lawsuit. On top of that uh, don't forget that Mark Basile will file his major lawsuit uh, against authorities and I think uh, we will see it within a week or within two weeks and this case uh, should involve all the latest updates uh, that we found out uh, via due diligence processes. And uh, this uh, lawsuit uh, might be also extremely important for the community. So, and let me show you what should uh, authorities do. Uh, let me show you this uh, tweet again. Uh, it was uh, written uh, by Christian Shaughnessy and it is basically a direct speech uh, from Richard Hoffman. And Richard Hoffman said that if uh, SEC and uh, uh, FINRA found out that there is a toxic lander who is trying uh, to push uh, the price uh, of a uh, certain company down. It should be the first time a warning and the 30-day suspension and the second time out. Done. Finished. So, Kurt Kramer, you got to be out. And Richard is extremely disappointed about uh, the actions that didn't uh, happen uh, when the SEC Commission found out uh, that uh, Kurt Kramer's companies diluted uh, microcap stocks to the oblivion. And this uh, rule should be implemented uh, in order to have uh, more transparent markets. On top of that, guys, let me show you uh, the experience of other countries uh, in their uh, fight against illegal activity. Christian Shaughnessy wrote this tweet 20 hours ago. South Korea's regulators expected to keep short selling ban in place until next year. And uh, this shows how effective this ban is because it was implemented uh, I think at the very end of 2023, and it was implemented for six months, till uh, June of uh, this year. And uh, we are in uh, May, and uh, I think uh, because of uh, the results uh, of uh, this implementation, South Korea decided to extend uh, this uh, period. And uh, this is another evidence uh, how uh, powerful these tools might be against uh, the illegal activity. And guys, SEC should do the same in order to stay in line with their own statements that they are protecting retail investors. And guys, let me tell you my personal story. I have a wife and two children aged 11 and uh, 15, as well as a small dog. After 30 years of living in Russia near the Baikal Lake, we decided to move. Now we reside in Serbia. Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. 
we've agreed that I will ask the MHLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month, I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad, doing no cap, only God wants you